เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เราเรียนได้เรา All right, and you guys know that here, we know what the slope is, and m is your y-intercept. All right. Now I showed you guys the point slope form. You didn't like it, so I'm going to go and re-explain this problem again, just using the slope-intercept form. So right now we know <laughs> that the equation of the line is y equals m x plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. Everybody agree with me on that? Yeah. Good. Okay. So now, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to find the equation of the line, I have to know what the slope is. Does this problem provide me with the slope? Yes. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So I can write y equals one third x plus b. I still don't know what the y-intercept is, do, do I? So whenever you're given a problem where it tells you what the slope is, put it in for m. Does that make sense? Just plug it in. You know it's there. Now, how do you find out what the y-intercept is? Well, if you're not very good with algebra. And you're like, you know what? I really understand how to graph, but I just don't understand the slope part. Why don't you graph it? Sometimes you'll be able to find the y-intercept. All right. If I graph this, if I go over to three, negative two, one, two, three, down two, my slope is up one over three. Up one over three, one, two, three, or down one to the left three. So I could really say that my my y-intercept here is at zero comma negative three. Now, not always is your graph going to be that easy, all right? Or are you always going to have a y-intercept that evenly crosses at an integer? So this isn't a foolproof way, but however, you guys can check your work by graphing, or if you just really like to do graphing, you can flip over your page and graph it. So, but now, what happens if I'm just given a point? How can I do that without graphing? Well, we know that a point has an x and a y coordinate, right? That point was three comma negative two. So what I say it, what I can do is, if I know what an x and a y are, but I don't know what my b is, I'm going to plug my x and y into my points. Do the two right back. One, oh two should remain on the sidewalk at the back of the area. There should wait for about two seventy four to come back to the school. Do the two right back. One. O2 should remain on the sidewalk and wait for bus 274 to come back to the school. Okay. So now the dilemma that a lot of you came up with, with the beginning of the year we worked on, if you have one third times three, how do you write? How do you write a fraction times a whole number? You change your whole number to a fraction, because three divided by one is still three. Now, when you multiply fractions, you multiply across. One times three is three. Three times one is three. Three divided by three is one. So therefore, what I get here is um, one plus b. Now you say, well, what do I do here next? Well, we still don't know what our b is, right? So you need to solve for b, meaning I need to get b by itself, b equals. So what's on the side of b? We have a one. Is it a positive or a negative? It's a positive. That means I need to subtract a one to get rid of that one on that side. So whatever you do on one side, you subtract on the other. Negative three equals B. Therefore, now my B equals negative three. So ladies and gentlemen, do I now know what the y-intercept is? Yes. yes. Do I now, did I already know what the slope was? Mm -hmm. So now I can say y equals one third x minus three is my equation of my line. Got it? Lucky dog. Done. There you go. <laughs>